Welcome to Bringing the Word to You. This is your host, Minister Tim Greco, coming out of Omaha, Nebraska. We know how hard and difficult it is to get to church and Bible study, so that's where this ministry brings the word to you. You know, God is a good God. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. All thanks to my personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the opportunity to teach his word. Thanking him for taking me where I once was to where he has brought me to today. We want to thank everybody for tuning in today as this is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We hope that you are strengthened and encouraged by the end of this program and we pray that if you don't know Jesus now that you do know him before the program is over. We pray that if you have taken your eyes off of Jesus that you put them back on him and repent as the Bible says Come unto me, all ye who are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. We pray that if you are hopeless, that you are given a hope in Jesus Christ that will not fail you. God is always good, and he's doing so many great things through this ministry. Thanks to all of you who prayerfully consider giving to the ministry and all your generous contributions, we are able to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ all around the world, reaching so many. All we need is an invite from you, and we would love to fellowship, worship, and bring the word to you. So please visit our website at www.timothygrecoministries.org to learn more and book us today so we can continue to build God's kingdom together. Let's pray. Lord, we just want to thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to lift up your name. Lord, we thank you for everybody who is listening, Lord, that they come to salvation, Lord, that we all come to repentance, that we're all given a hope in you. Lord, this is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, let us be a lighthouse in a dark area. Let us always share the gospel of Jesus Christ and let us always be there for our loved ones, Lord. Let us not worry about anything, but pray about everything. Lord, I pray that you empty me of myself and speak to your people the way that you want to speak to them for a fresh anointing, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So not too long ago, we did a message on rehabilitation, and I kind of wanted to do a part two on that because it's such a powerful word. Rehabilitation is the action of restoring someone to health or normal life through training and therapy after imprisonment, addiction, or illness. Feeling imprisoned and feeling addicted and feeling ill is not the identity that God wants to have for you. The Lord gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but of everlasting life. Today, the Lord wants to restore you. He wants to bring you back to him. He wants to fill you with all the fruit of the spirit, but you have to be born again. You have to be born of the water and the spirit as Jesus was talking to Nicodemus in John chapter three. How do you become born again? The Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. So you simply call upon the name of the Lord. You confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. You got to be sick and tired of being sick and tired and you got to want to change your life. You got to want to be rehabilitated by God. See, so often in our lives, pride gets in the way and pride is a feeling of deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own achievements. The fall of Lucifer in Isaiah chapter 14, the word of God says, How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend, I will exalt, I will ascend above, I will be like the most high. I, 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 that is pride, and that is what got Lucifer kicked out of heaven. Cast it down the earth, a.k.a. Satan. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for somebody to devour. Now you see the seriousness of pride. So much so that Lucifer got booted out of heaven for it. We can't walk around being prideful because we are nothing without Jesus and everything we are and everything we have comes from God. And so the next time we get prideful, anytime pride tries to creep into my life, I'm um, having a local radio program, a local television program and just being used by God, I always have to remember that I am nothing without Jesus Christ. I am who I am today because of who God is. And I am nothing but a dirty, filthy rag compared to the righteousness of Jesus. As a matter of fact, 
I am some things without Jesus and what I am is lost. What I am is confused. What I am is an addict. What I am is this. What I am is that all negative things. But the Lord revealed to me his love and I love myself and I love other people because God first loved me. Following all 600 plus commands in the Old Testament is too hard and too difficult. And that was God's point. He was saying, let me simplify it for you a little bit. Not only am I going to send my son Jesus to die on a cross for you, but I'm going to simplify it a little bit and love your neighbor as you love yourself and love God with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. And that's what the Lord said. So we need to first love ourselves to be able to love other people. We need to first love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength before we can love ourselves, and we need to love ourselves before we can love other people. It's a trickle-down effect. That love, mercy, grace, and forgiveness we receive from God, we're able to shed it on to other people. And I want to go ahead and jump into some scripture here in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 5 through 11. The Word of God says, Likewise, you younger people, submit yourself to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober and vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is a powerful scripture here in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 5 through 11. Likewise, younger people, submit yourself to your elders. Sometimes younger people don't want to submit themselves to their elders because pride comes in. A lot of people don't want rehabilitation. They think they're already good enough to live everyday life and they think they're going to heaven because they're a good person. But pride creeps in and they are too prideful to submit themselves to their elders. See, when I walk into a Bible study or I walk into a church service or I'm around other people, I humble myself because it could be pride that gets in the way of me learning from them, from me being educated by them, from me being sharpened by them. Because we know that iron sharpens iron, but too many people are too prideful to submit themselves to their elders or submit themselves to what it is God is trying to teach them. I had a talk with my son the other day and every time I go to teach my son something, he tends to interrupt me and act as if he already knows. I said, son, let me tell you something. You're nine years old and you do not know everything. My son is so awesome. He's so loving. He's so caring. He's merciful. He's great, graceful, and he's grateful. He's a great athlete. Um, he has a heart for other people, but something that I'm trying to teach him in life as his father is to humble yourself and listen because it could be your pride that gets in the way from learning the things that I am trying to teach you. It could be our pride that gets in the way from learning the things that the Lord is trying to teach us. I remember when I was 14, 15, 16, 17, I thought I knew everything, but I look back now and I didn't know anything because what you learn from 15 to 35, and I can only imagine what you learn from 35 to 80. I'm excited for what God has to teach me within these next 45, 50 years. And I'm going to humble myself and I'm going to open up my ears and I'm going to be ready to learn that rehabilitation process, that sanctification process. If you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, you have not even become justified. When you come to salvation, calling upon the name of the Lord, believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, you become justified, you become somebody, you become a child of the king, and then there's a sanctification process, a rehabilitation process. For me, 
it took a while to get off of the drugs and the alcohol and some of the other addictions I had and the foul language. I always used to say that English was my second language because I cussed so much. Those of you who have been in the military, English was our second language because profanity was our first. The Bible says, be clothed with humility. Today, my question to you is, what are you clothed with? Are you clothing your self with the things of this world are you clothing yourself with bad company which is corrupting your good character are you clothing yourself with lying stealing cheating then having to remember who you lied to and what lie you said to who i used to get so sick and tired of doing that i would get caught up in my own lies so often because i would lie to just about everybody i came in contact with to get what it is i wanted when it was i wanted it and then i had to remember who it was i was lying to and the lies that i would speak to other people it got very tiring and very exhausting a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways if you're double-minded trying to serve god and the world at the same time you can't do it you can't be lukewarm god will spit you out of his mouth you can't serve two masters at the same time you're gonna love one and despise the other so today what master do you love do you love god the one that sent jesus christ do you love another god that you think is god but is another god that's coming to kill steal and destroy you do you love satan do you love the world who do you love and why there's only one true god my god trumps buddha my god trumps mohammed my God trumps any religion out there, Mormon, Jehovah's Witness. My God trumps that. So many people today are going around standing up for the religion that they believe in more than the relationship they have with Jesus. If you're going around talking more about how you're a Catholic, if you're going around more talking about how you're a Jehovah's Witness, if you're going around more talking about how you're a Mormon, but not talking about Jesus, it makes me look at you and question you. So many people want to feel a part of something. So many people want to feel accepted, but they're trying to feel accepted and wanted in a religion as opposed to a relationship. Younger people, submit yourself to your elders. Be clothed with humility. God resists the proud. Stop going around representing your religion more than you do your relationship with Jesus. God gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. See, where people go wrong is they resist the devil, resist the devil, resist the devil, but they fail to first submit to God. We have to first submit to God before we can resist the devil because it's the power of God that's going to keep the devil away. If you're resisting the enemy and resisting the enemy and resisting the enemy without submitting to the Lord first... He's going to keep coming back to you and he's going to keep on messing with you. It's submission to God and it's the power of God. And it's by the power of the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of us. That's going to keep the enemy away from you. So we need to submit ourselves and humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt us in due time, casting all of our cares upon him because he cares for you. This is part of the rehabilitation process. This is part of the action process of being restored back to our original health, our normal life through training and therapy by God. Many people have been in prison and, and addicted and, and have an illness, but today the Lord wants to heal you, deliver you and set you free. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Today, the enemy wants to devour you. Who's protecting you? I don't want to glorify the enemy, but I will tell you, you are no match for him and I am no match for him. The majority of my life, I was very independent because I got through a lot of the things in my life on my own. And so when I gave my life to the Lord, I wanted to get through everything on my own and I wanted to walk this life with the Lord on my own. But I learned real quick that the enemy will chew you up and spit you out. That's not to glorify him, but we are no match for him. That's why we need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, because it's by the power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. When we submit ourselves in the mighty hand of God, when we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God and then resist the enemy, that God will will start working in your life he will lead you guide you 
We resist the enemy steadfast in faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by the brotherhood in the world. You're not the only one going through what it is you're going through today. You're not the only one being picked on. You're not the only one being lied to. You're not the only one people are sowing discord about. You're not the only one that people are gossiping about because it's happening to me and it's happening to the brotherhood all around the world. That should comfort us. That's where we come together as the body of Christ and we pray for each other. We lift each other up. We come together in unity. We don't act like the rest of the world. We don't act in foolishness and go join riots. We don't act in foolishness and cause division amongst one another. We don't come together and, and, and talk about each other behind our backs. We don't look at the color of somebody's skin and mistreat them. We don't act like the rest of the world. We should know better because God is our father and Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Savior. The rest of the world is looking to us as God leads by example. We follow God's lead. As we follow God's lead and we lead by example and we come together, no matter what the color of your skin is, the rest of the world is going to follow our lead. Other people can very well come to salvation because of our love for one another. So many times when I love on my brothers and sisters in the Lord, I've had people say, I want what you have. Loving our brothers and sisters in the Lord opens up a door and an opportunity for us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Loving our brothers and sisters in the Lord opens up a door and an opportunity for other people to come to salvation. You take a look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they were tossed in the fiery furnace, how they kept their eyes on God. You take a look at Daniel, how he was thrown into the lion's den, how he kept a good attitude and kept his eyes on the Lord. Whose eyes are you looking at and where is your heart today? When you're being brought to the fiery furnace, which we are not, if we were brought to the lion's den, which we are not, who are you going to and who are you talking to? Are you going to the throne or are you picking up the phone? So many people are so quick to pick up the phone before they go to the throne. We need to go to the throne before we pick up the phone. When we go to the throne, God will show us who to call who to reach out to. God will send people our way to speak to us, to encourage us, but we need to go to him first. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego handling the situation that, the way that they did even led King Nebuchadnezzar to praise and worship God. Daniel keeping a good attitude and having faith in the Lord, even while in a lion's den, even the lions in the den were under the authority of Daniel himself, because God has given us authority over everything in this world, including animals. And we need to use the power and the authority that God has given us to cast every evil spirit and demon away from us in the name of Jesus. We need to stand up. If the rest of the world is able to come together and stand up for what they believe in, in the sick, nasty, satanic, going against the word of God, Black Lives Matter movement. If the rest of the world is able to come together and organize a gay and lesbianism, homosexuality and stand up to it um, with all they have, then we should be able to stand up for Jesus. We should be able to stand up for what's right. We should be able to stand on the living word of God. We should be able to do all of these things because we have God on our side. We're already victorious. We have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. We know right from wrong. I was at a Bible study a couple of weeks ago and the question was, why did Jesus come? Why did Jesus come? I was sitting at a table with seven men that have been going to church for over 15 years. Men in their 40s, men in their 50s, men in their 60s, bragging about how they've been attending the same church for 22 years and giving the most ridiculous answers ever as to why Jesus came. You're so prideful that you're bragging about how you came to church for 22 years, but you don't know the answer as to why Jesus came? If we don't know the answer... As to why Jesus came, how is the rest of the world going to know? If you don't know that Jesus came with a sword to bring division amongst people, to separate the wheat from the weeds, if you don't know that we can ask for forgiveness as God is quick to forgive us of all unrighteousness, if you don't know that you have to be born again to see the kingdom of God, if you don't know that, then how is the rest of the world going to know that? 
I went to this church here in Omaha and I won't say which one it is as tempting as it is to let everybody know, but I'm not going to gossip or sow discord. You can go to the church for yourself and I pray the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart. We went into this church. They opened up worship with ACDC, Led Zeppelin and Metallica. What? They had the fog and the smoke and the lights in the in the sanctuary playing Metallica, ACDC, and Led Zeppelin. What? Many of these pastors today are letting the enemy creep right into the church. Many of these pastors today are letting gay and lesbianism uh, right into the front door of their church. Now, gays and homosexuals and lesbians, they're welcome into the church just like adulterers are and fornicators are and liars and stealers and thieves. Everybody's welcome into the church, but the sin is not. These pastors are letting gay couples sit in the front row and hold hands and kiss each other. These pastors are letting alcoholics come in and drink a bottle of Jack Daniels sitting right there in the pew. These pastors are letting adulterers come in and putting their arms around other women other than their wife and kissing them on the cheek right in the front doors of their church. A little bit of that yeast is going to spread throughout the whole batch of dough. There's a lot of reasons as to why they're doing it. The love of money is the root of all evil. Well, I'm going to let that gay couple sit in the front row and hold hands because they write an $800 check and it pays for half of my rent. Well, I'm going to let that alcoholic drink a bottle of Jack Daniels there in pew number three because they write a $1,000 check and it pays for three-fourths of my rent. You don't think that God's going to provide the rent or the, more, or, the, or, the, or the money for your church? So you're going to choose to turn your back on God and allow the sin to come right into your church so that this yeast spreads throughout the whole batch of dough. Now you got a whole congregation that's committing sin right there in the sanctuary and you're twisting and turning the word of God, tickling other people's ears, letting them know what they want to hear. Shame on you. Don't let my words be twisted up because homosexuals are welcome into church. Adulterers are welcome in the church. Alcoholics are welcome in the church. Drug addicts are welcome in the church because that's where we get rehab. That's where we come to salvation. That's where we receive the Holy Spirit to walk us through what it is we're going through. However, we don't love the sin. We love those who are struggling with sin and we want to pray for them that they be healed, delivered and set free. A quick example, and I'm not picking on homosexual people, but a quick example is if two gay people walk into church, you guys are welcome in the church, but you're not going to sit in the church sanctuary and kiss each other and hold hands to each other because that is a sin of homosexuality and that sin is not welcome in the church. Let's use adulterers, for example. If you are a married man and you come into the church with another woman other than your wife and you're sitting in the front row kissing her on the cheek, that is not welcome in the sanctuary. And if I was the pastor of a church, I would tell you to get out. You're either going to submit to the Holy Spirit and repent of your sin or you're going to get out of the church and go commit that sin elsewhere. That's how it has to be. And when you run a church that way, you're going to have people in that sanctuary that genuinely want a relationship with Jesus, love Jesus, that want to come to repentance and want to turn away from their sin and not continue to live in it. If we're allowing people to bring sin into the church, shame on you. If you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, I ask that you just repeat after me, calling upon the name of the Lord, believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead. Dear Lord God, I ask you into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. I ask that you forgive me of my sins, Lord, and come into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior, filling me with your Holy Spirit, leading me, guiding me and directing me. Take all my shame, take all that guilt, take all that unforgiveness right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you have backslid, repent. You will be forgiven. One of the greatest lies the enemy told me for so long that kept me addicted to drugs and alcohol was, Tim, you dug yourself so deep you can't get out. And that's a lie because right when I, was, right when I repented, I was forgiven. Join a good Bible-based church. Come and join us 
for Bible study on Tuesdays from 6 to 8 p.m. here in Omaha, Nebraska. Please go to YouTube, type in Timothy Greco, subscribe to my channel. Please go to our website, www.timothygrecoministries.org. Please reach out to me anytime at timothygrecoministries at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. Give us your prayer requests, your words of encouragement, and let's connect and partner together to continue to lead people to salvation, preach repentance, and give people a hope in Jesus that will not fail them. We want to thank all of you so much for taking the time to tune in today. We hope that people came to salvation and repentance today. Please continue to partner with us for we build God's kingdom together and put the enemy on his back. Always remember that we are already victorious, just needing to persevere and finish the race. Don't fear anything for God is on the throne and his plan will prevail. Please book us today to come fellowship, worship, and bring the word to you. All we need is an invite. Please visit our website at www.timothygrecoministries.org and prayerfully consider contributing to the ministry as we are so very thankful for the contributions as they are being used to lead others to Jesus, bring others back to Jesus, and give people a hope in Jesus that will not fail them. God always seems to make a way when there doesn't seem to be one. Feel free to contact me by email at any time timothygrecoministries at gmail.com and if nobody told you they love you today we love you god loves you and we pray you have a blessed rest of the day in jesus name let's go